Imagine being so miserable that you make up an email address to send it to a black woman. And in the subject, you call her a worthless NB. And then in the body of the email, you say that you hope someone grapes her and her head off. So yeah, we're going to have to keep talking about this until the WNBA realizes that they need to do a lot more to protect black women from racism and homophobia while playing in the WNBA. Because as you can see, as shown from the most improved player in the WNBA, Dejanay Carrington, this is just a snapshot, a snippet of some of the racism that they've been experiencing since Caitlin Clark was drafted in the league. Angel Reese has been telling y'all this the entire season. Dejanay Carrington was telling y'all the entire season. But the only thing the WNBA commissioner seemed to be concerned about was the fact that they were making a lot more money this year. And then the Fever lost in the playoffs, so Caitlin Clark's season was done. And Alyssa Thomas talked more about the racism she faced from Fever fans even more during the press conference. It was only then that the WNBA would feel the need to address it. After having it brought to their attention all season, conveniently they decided to address it after Caitlin Clark was eliminated, after they realized that they could no longer benefit from the rating surge that comes with her playing in WNBA games. That's when they would decide to issue a statement condemning racism, when they realized the likelihood that those incidents would occur again had diminished significantly because Caitlin Clark would no longer play another game this season. Y'all, Caitlin Clark's own teammates, folks like Aaliyah Boston, had to delete their Twitter account due to racist harassment. And there was no statement when it was happening then. WNBA, y'all looking real bad right now. Even with your former players who lost a lot of respect for y'all. As it's clear that you all have shown that you value money, capital, and the dollar over the safety of your players. And it's deeper than basketball, y'all, because black women also deal with weathering or early health decline due to coping with persistent stress. According to a 2006 study, in fact, black women have the highest chronic stress load compared to black men, white men, and white women, a pattern not explained by socioeconomic factors such as poverty. This same 2006 study showed how navigating a race and gender conscious society requires high stress coping that weakens black women's bodies and puts them at greater risk of poor health outcomes. So it's very dismissive to think that they can just get over it or that since they're making more money, it won't impact them the same. The WNBA should remember that black women have been at the forefront of professional athlete protests for social justice since at least 2016. And this was happening before Cap took his knee. And speaking of that knee, how you think those new Fever fans will feel about this?